I'm just imagining a bar full of drunk assholes trying to walk around on crutches. Welcome, everybody, into Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for joining. Most importantly, thanks for listening. I am Greg. I'm being joined by, and he does have a PhD, Professor Flex. What up, what up? I feel like, uh, you know, coming out, like my, my wrestler entrance with this song, Greg. I, I absolutely love this song. I did appreciate the Randy Orton pose as we were Oh, you noticed that? On. Oh, I noticed. Oh. I wish the listeners could see what you were doing over there. One day. But I'm, I'm glad I got to see it. And uh, joining me in studio is uh, the smartest beer drinker we know, Deb. Hey, friends. Hey, thanks, thanks for, for hanging out with Deb. us. Thanks yeah. for having me. Deb is looking very uh, vibrant and and, and uh, oh, jovial. This? And, uh, you know, she had, had some, some work done to her. Peely. Someone say Peely? Yeah, yeah. Is this very appealing to you? I was going to say, she had some work done to her face, but in California, that could mean something very different. You mean literally like anything. Like surgery, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just, just some skin regimen. So anyways, Deb, thanks for hanging out. Hope you'll have a couple beers with us. Heck yeah. Uh, to those of you on the socials, make sure you go out there and you find us at Craft Beer Republic. You find Deb at one hop, you know, like the hops you drink, mess, and flex at flex me a beer with underscores in between. And uh, if you're shopping on that Tavor... Make sure you use a code unfiltered for a little uh, discount on your first purchase. <laughs> and in fact, uh, Deb and I will be drinking a, a beer from Tavor in just a couple of few. But before we get to that, let's find out what Flex is drinking. What beer are you loving? All right, so today, um, I've, I've never shouted these guys out on the show yet. Um, I've talked about them, but I've never had their beer. So I'm drinking uh, the Explorium Brew Pubs Lost in the Sauce VX Series. It's a, mm. it's an experimental series. They do, uh, I, they've, they've lost track of how many they've done so far, but it's all New England IPAs. Um, they experiment with different hops, and this series is uh, the Dragon Hop and the Wolf Hop. Um, the uh, untapped description on this one says, Our newest installment in the VX series, this time featuring two new hops from the old world, developed in Slovenia's historic hop growing region, Styrian Wolf and Styrian Dragon hop varieties partner to bring a wallop of citrus and pineapple with soft melon notes and a floral punch reminiscent of chrysanthemum. Now get lost. Wow. Experimentally. Hashtag Litz. So, yeah, that's quite the description. Uh, very stone-esque. Now, yeah. let's talk a little bit about <laughs> hops. I like that drop. Sorry, that's a joke that's lost on people from out of state. My oh. apologies. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I like that one. Uh, so, okay, good. So this comes in at a, a 408 collective on untapped. It's a 6.6% nice. with 20 IBUs. And uh, let's do ourselves a little diving in. Yeah, dive on in there. I, I'm excited to find out what the tongue jabber thinks about that thing. You just wait on the tongue jabber, right? <laughs> so right now on the nose, it's a lot of light citrus and you get some floral, a little bit of that tiny floral on the back end. And now, <clears throat> three, two, one, <laughs> tongue jabber time. Oh, sweet Lord. <laughs> we need a drop for that. Like the movie guy in a world. <laughs> right. Yeah. Where only beer, one tongue matters. Where yeah. tongue jobbers taste. No, but for real, after that first sip, um, the wallop of citrus, man, they hit that one right on the head. Um, not so much pineapple, a little bit of the melon, but again, that floral punch at the end. Um, they really nailed it with that. Uh, it's light. It's pretty damn hazy. Leaving looks some, real juicy, right? Mm -hmm. it, it is. It's it, it. It looks like it would be a little bit thicker, but it's kind of nice. It's uh, I mean, nowadays at six point six percent, it's almost like a sessionable range of <laughs> mm -hmm. ABV. I mean, nowadays when sessionables used to be four and a half, and now yeah, it's like hey, it's only yeah. eight percent. You know, if you see something with like a, a six and a half on it, you're just kind of like, oh yeah, I can drink that all day. Yeah, I can have two of these and drive home. We're good. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and think you might have a problem, <laughs> but, but we don't. 
Every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean, they, they really did a great job on this. I've actually never heard of these hops before either, the Wolf and the Dragon. Mm-hmm. Top-notch beer from these guys. And uh, like, like I've said before, they're attached to a shopping mall. They're five minutes away, and they're attached to the local shopping say. mall, and they just brew some goddamn amazing beer. Fucking love these guys. If we had good breweries attached to shopping malls out here, I might be able to be convinced from the wife to go to the mall a little more frequently. Right, yeah, hey, let's go shopping. Oh, okay, let's mm. just hit up uh, the, the brewery. Yeah, i got to make a pit something. stop over at uh, Old Navy or some shit. I'll meet you up in a couple hours. <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's funny you say Need that. some performance <laughs> fleece. That, that's always like, my wife always tries to draw me in with that. She's like, oh, yeah, do you want to go to the mall? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And she's like, well, we can go to Explorium for dinner. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, All we'll right. go to the mall. <laughs> Yeah, I could use a new polo anyways. <laughs> My arms ripped through the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Tons, I got a pile of those. <laughs> ripped shirts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> oh, well, it sounds phenomenal, and I'm excited for you to have a, a good brewery at the mall. It's pretty sweet. I'd like to say something, too. Please. What's up? The word wallop. Yeah. In the description. I very much like that. Yeah. We need to start using the word wallop more frequently. That is an underused I think word. Every everybody needs to use the word wallop. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think that's an outstanding suggestion, Deb. That'd be a good Instagram handle, like wallop of hops or something like that. Oh, that's good. Or like, you heard it here first. Don't fucking take my idea, people. <laughs> it's probably already taken. You should race down tomorrow and get right. a trademark on that. Right. <laughs> Gotta get to the gram real quick. <laughs> Let's think. And the best part about this can, you know, in this this Lost in the Sauce series. Is, is the Gucci main quote they have on the, the can. Every single mm. can of the Lost in the Saw series. It says, if a man does not have sauce, then he is lost. But the same man can get lost in the sauce. Thank you, Gucci main. That's mm-hmm. deep. Deep, yeah. deep, deep. Yeah, our homie Gucci main. GM for short, as I like yeah. to call him. Uh, well, very nice. Um, let me start off with two very quick things. First of all, as we record today, it is... One of the best people in the world's birthday. Happy birthday, Wendy. Happy Repugus birthday, Wendy. Happy birthday, Wendy. Go give her birthday loves. Yeah, if people don't uh, know Wendy's the best, Wendy is the absolute best. That's right. We should have a song just called Wendy's the Best. And uh, then the other thing was uh, a little th- a little cleanup from last week. I must say, Flex, you were right about something. You need we a drop were... for that. <laughs> well, I mean, we need like that the... Flex fact drop. This happens more often than it probably should. That, that's possible. But uh, we were talking about cocktails and like area drinks, and you were talking about Wisconsin having old fashions. I was like, oh, I love old fashioned. You mentioned it was a brandy old fashioned. I said, blasphemy. I've never had a brandy old fashioned. I never see them on the menu. So I searched <laughs> what is Wisconsin's favorite cocktail. Sure enough, Wisco style brandy old fashioned. Yeah. Yep. Some brandy old fashioned sweet. Yeah. What and- style? Wisco, you know, Wisco. Wisconsin. Is that, so that's like a Wisconsin slang? Uh, yeah, I yeah, guess so. Like, so like, Wisco is short for Wisconsin. Mm, here's okay. here's their recipe. Two ounces brandy, two ounces soda, seven up, something like that. Uh, two dashes bitters, a sugar cube, two orange slices, and two maraschino cherries. Uh, add sugar and bitters to an old-fashioned glass. Throw fruit in the glass and muddle until combined. Add ice, pour in brandy and soda, stir, enjoy. I have never had a brandy old fashioned. And this to me sounds a little on the sweet side. Mm-hmm. What does. I'm used to. It is very sweet. Mm-hmm. My wife and her family drink them like they're water. Nice. Um, like a good afternoon with the kids. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you can't have kids if you don't have old fashions. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's got to start somewhere. That's how you. That's how you make the kids. You start with the old fashions. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't get to kids if you don't have old fashions, you know? Right, um, right. But I mean, it, it's a it is a sweeter beverage, you know. When you follow the mixer guidelines, you know, so you're not over boozing it. Mm-hmm. But again, if you muddle the sugar cube with like the the orange, like the fruit and everything, and it, it just mm-hmm. it just works really well together. And it's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's like that perfect, enjoyable drinking sweetness. Is it deliciable? I I would say as a Wisconsinite, it is an absolutely delishable beverage. All right, I mean, I give it a try. I'm I'm more of a fan of like I like my old fashions to be like 98 percent whiskey, yeah, and then like two percent everything else that goes in it. I I mean, I don't know if that's a California thing. It, well, it I'm, might th- be. I'm thinking to myself, why aren't you just drinking a Manhattan then? 
Yeah, I mean, I guess the difference is what the old fashioned has a little bit of uh, uh, sugar in it, really, right? Well, you do the the whiskey. The it's basically like whiskey, yeah. whiskey and vermouth. Oh, okay. So an old fashioned out here is whiskey or bourbon, uh, a little bit of sugar, some bitters, and like a orange, an orange twist. Yeah, like, like the orange. peel. Yeah. Okay. Twist. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, not here. Whisco, whisco style, baby. Whisco style. I like. That. Check it out, whisco style. The funny thing is when. You talk to anybody in Wisconsin about an old fashioned, they will tell you you've never had an old fashioned until you've had a Wisconsin old fashioned. All right. Well, just I might have some I'm, Randy I'm, downstairs. I am just putting it out there. It's now in the name that we're specifically a beer show, but <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll have to dig up some brandy and do a little science, a little research, I guess. Wait, there's no law that I know of in the Craft Beer Republic that you can only drink craft beer. That's true. Right? I have, there's been no decree. Right. Yeah. So there's no reason why we can't do a side by side comparison of the old fashioned as we know it as Californians right. versus that sweet Wisco style. <laughs> Whose science is sweet who's science? <laughs> That's true. I also like the sweet Wisco style. <laughs> Anytime I talk about flex, that's what I'm going to say from now on. <laughs> Makes me think of that song, you know, Frisco Kid, but instead yeah. it's the Wisco Kid. The Wisco Kid. <laughs> he sure was a friend of mine. Now you oh, want to talk dear. about IG handle, the Wisco Kid. Oh, shit. Yeah, I like that's what's it. happening here. We need a think tank We going. do. People should pay us for this shit. They this should. is yeah. a think tank of a show. Oh, we bring the smarts, everybody. We bring the smarts. I'm going to copyright Tongue Jobber, though. Oh, pff. yeah, that's yours. <laughs> you own it. I borrow it. I should probably pay you royalties for it. You're allowed. Thanks to Erica. Just came back on the track real quick. Thanks to Erica. Uh, I'll talk about this in a second. It was my birthday last week, and uh, she sent a bunch of awesome beer over. Can't wait to to have those delicious beers. Shout out to her. Go follow her on Necknosh. Now let's get down to business. Oh, I, oh, hold on. Quick birthday note. Did go out to a new brewery in, in North Hollywood called Lawless brewing for my birthday checked them out they've been open for a mm, couple months now maybe uh pretty good we were there about two weeks after they opened and it was real hit and miss and since then that was like back in may since then they've definitely upped their game and we had some really good beers is this the place that's also been using oak and iron as a satellite Yes, they just out here in our area used Oak and Iron, which is a, a cocktail place mm-hmm. as like their craft, satellite. Wonderful craft cocktails. Delicious, delishable. Craft Very cocktails. delishable. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now they're like a the partnering up and it's their satellite tap room. Yes, those people. Okay. Have you tried them yet? I haven't. I've heard mixed reviews. Yes. Early on, very mixed. Like, but last weekend. So here's what happened. So the wife uh, surprised me. Got Nick and Nicole of, uh, over there at the booze league to come with us. And we stopped there first and uh, had, had I don't know, two flights. I think we just kind of like, you know, one of everything type of thing. And there were a couple where I was like, not my jam. But I'd say like six of the eight, definitely good. All right. Like the last time we were there was like one or two were good. So, so they're, increasing the quality. Yes. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, like, you know, they're they're learning their system, whatever it is. So it, it's definitely getting better. I re- it's one of those things where like if you're in the area, totally recommend it. Would I drive a very long time to get there? Not there yet. So, um, but then after that, the wife very much surprised me with a trip over to Black Market Liquor. Oh Jesus, Black Market Liquor Club or Liquor Black Market Liquor something. Anyways, do you know Antonio Lafaso, Chef Antonio Lafaso? Yes, I love her. It's one of her restaurants. Oh, She's, oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I love her too. I have a huge chef crush on her. And I've never been to any of her restaurants. So for my birthday, she took me over there and, and we had some delishable food. You know, her baby daddy was Heavy D. It was? Yeah. Let me double. I'm going to double check that. Hold but on. Yeah, hold it on. It was Heavy D because intern Brian and I have talked about that before. What? Yeah. Heavy D. She was with Heavy D and that is the father of her child. May he rest in peace. Right. I did not realize that. I knew her her baby daddy had died. I didn't realize it was it was heavy D. Heavy D. D. Yeah. Holy shit. We love Top Chef and I frequently reference the line with um Fabio where he says uh, the show is called Top Chef not Top Escalop <laughs> because the one chick kept making scallops. <laughs> <laughs> and I love scallops and I make them pretty frequently and so I always go it's not Top Chef. It's Top Chef. It's not <laughs> a Top Scallops. That's so good. <laughs> or whatever it was. Anyway, it just 
I love Top Chef. So yes. Yeah, I love Food Network. I love all that stuff. I love her um, Black Market Liquor Bar. That's what it's called. Yeah. Boy, was that hard to come with. But it's funny. We we start off with like appetizers, and one of the things we got was uh, deviled quail eggs. And you know, quail eggs are very little, very, very little. tiny. I do know very- that about quail eggs. <laughs> Exactly, and they show, and of course they're cut in half because they're deviled, you know, all that, all that stuff. And they show up, and they put the plate down of these little tiny quail eggs, and Nick looks at me and goes, "Oh shit, I'm gonna be hungry." <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for Nick, that was not the the pattern for everything we ordered, but like the appetizer appetizers were definitely small bite, and it was very you know share a little just to taste kind like of tapas thing. or. Yeah, almost. Yeah, I mean, it's like six or eight Tapas little is tiny what's small quail eggs. plates, not small bites, though, right? Oh, yeah. that's a moose. Yeah, bouche. yeah, that's true, a moose bouche. But uh, <laughs> once once the mains came, then then we were good. Him and I both got steaks, and it was it was very very good size steak. So, um, but anyway, what's your, it was fantastic. what's your favorite cut of steak? Oh, it's tough. I mean, you can never beat a filet mignon just because you do it right. You get that crusty outside, that super like soft inside. It's just so good we had um i think it was a flank steak that we had when we were there it was it was done so well yeah i mean filets i know it's like the the stereotypical answer and it's not the tastiest cut of meat but I, just the texture of it and like how soft it is on the end that's what i love about it so much i'm very texturial no i'm that's a fillet i'm a fillet guy myself i've i've spoiled the wife she was not much of a, a red meat eater before we were together and even as we were together, and then I I made a filet one night. She's like, "Oh, this is really good." And I was like, "Yeah, it's flaming now. Like it better be fucking good." No, my mm-hmm. question is this: Have you ever bought the bacon wrapped ones? No, oh, I yeah. have not. Oh yeah. How the hell do you crisp the bacon? So you, you cook the filet, and it's the filet is perfect, and your bacon is always soggy. I imagine you gotta like roll the bacon on the pan first. My father in law, my wife's dad, he owns a butcher shop in town. Oh, sweet. So with the bacon wrapped filets. You take the bacon off and you got to fry it separately to get it crisp. And you then, like half cook them, right? Well, no, like you take the bacon off the filet and you'll cook the filet in one pan or grill. You know, mm-hmm. you guys are in California, so it's nice all the time. So you can grill. No, no, no. Pan. Filets have to be done on a cast iron. I don't, I don't do that shit on a barbecue. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then in a separate pan, you fry up the bacon so it can get crisp. And mm-hmm. then as you like, serve it on the plate you kind of, what my wife does is she cuts up the bacon in pieces you know as you cut up your steak and then she'll do a piece of bacon with a bite of steak and do it that way so then both are cooked to you know said perfections mm-hmm. for each each item well here's like when i'm doing the fillets and and that's i'm sure that works perfectly i've never done it but when i do the fillets i like to get a nice crust all around so i would imagine like i'd crust the top and bottom and then if the bacon's already wrapped around it, I just do like a nice slow roll on the super so hot cast iron I've before tried putting that, it in the oven. But it doesn't cook it the whole way through. So you mm. still end up with and I'm like, maybe this is a me issue because I am a I want my bacon crisp. Yeah. I don't like bacon no, I agree. if it's got any flop to it. No, I don't want to chew it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so maybe that's my issue is you just can't get it <laughs> bacon, <laughs> bacon flavored bubblegum. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'll do when I make uh, bacon wrapped like stuffed jalapenos. What I'll do is I'll par cook the bacon. Like, mm-hmm. I'll give it like halfway there, just enough so it's still rubbery, so you can like wrap it. Right. And then I'll wrap the the thing and stick it in the oven. Then it kind of finishes and gets pretty crispy. All right, it's, it's so pretty genius. Do, yeah, maybe you can do that with like a fillet too. Like half cook the bacon, then wrap the fillet, stick it in the oven, and be good to go. I don't know. Stick Welcome to the Craft Steak Republic. <laughs> There's no rules. Yeah. Side of old fashions. Yeah. Where's my brandy and filet? We're not drinking beer tonight. <laughs> that sounds classy as fuck, though. Sounds like a, it sounds like a Wisconsin podcast right now. That's it exactly. sounds very Ron Swanson <laughs> it to does. me. The steaks and the and the brandy. and All we need now is a meat tornado. <laughs> you had me at meat tornado. Um, and then finally, so anyways, that was a birthday. It was fantastic. The food was... It was just amazing. If if you're into chefy things at all, that was it was fucking phenomenal. Uh, and then the other thing is, uh, as we all know, it's been very widely talked about on the show. We won a bet against the booze league. We did. And that, we did because. Oh uh, my god! You got to be kidding me. Oh, there was some basketball team that won something. Yeah, some, some kind of some festival large or large something. man from Greece played with some balls, <laughs> and we won thanks to that. Um, it has been brought to my attention that they are quote unquote having a hard time. 
finding Milwaukee's best. Oh, bullshit. To pay up on their punishment. I've heard that uh, a little bit from Coley. I've heard that extensively from the commish, in quotes. I'll send them some. Is that what they want? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's... Is that what they're looking for? Is, is a, fif- a $15 medium flat rate full of <laughs> more... Like, uh, uh, I spend more on shipping than I did for the, the six right. cans of beer. <laughs> 15 bucks to ship, but only $4 to buy. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if that's what they're looking for. They're reporting to me that it is not easy to come by. And uh, I've been asked by Coley for potential substitutions. You guys got the steel reserves down there? I don't know. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And th- I think there's a steel reserve, like drink that's like a four loco oh, God. yeah yeah and we have that too i i saw that and was like what the hell is that <laughs> <laughs> i you know to be fair I, I haven't gone looking myself i did go on t- on untapped and search for old milwaukee or milwaukee's best or whatever and then uh you know did find near you and nothing popped up but i don't think people are checking it <laughs> on untapped yeah, frequently. yeah i mean i bet they have it at total wine that's probably not a bad idea. I was thinking maybe they have it at the uh, stagecoach. They have everything there, so maybe. I know at one point in time, back when Brian and I were doing the untapped, like trying to get all the badges or whatever. Oh, sure. There was a badge for it. Oh, was there? Really? And we found it, and I feel like we found it with some ease. But we probably just went to Total Wine. I would imagine. All right. So anybody in like the Southern California region, hit us up. Let us know if you've seen it somewhere recently. Um, because I think what's really happening is they're just trying to get. They out don't want to drink do it. it. Yeah. yeah, we're look, we're looking for a proxy right now. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, if we can't find it, we're gonna need some suggestions for for subs. And I think we should go really, really shitty since they snaked their way out of it. I mean, just the worst beer we can think of. Yeah, I don't I don't appreciate this right now. Yeah, I, I mean, why don't we have them do something like King Cobra or something? You know, like or uh, oh, yeah. I was gonna say Colt Forty Five or Colt Forty Five <laughs> or. Um, <laughs> Old it's English. Lando Clarissian approved. <laughs> Old English, yeah. Mickey's Big Mouth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mickey's right on. If you can find it at a 7-Eleven at like 2 a.m., <laughs> that's that's what we're looking yeah. for. 158 before they cut you off. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, we need some suggestions there. Before we uh, talk about what Deb and I are sipping on over here, we got a voicemail from one of my favorite listeners. Here is a voicemail from our homie down in the valley. Chew your beer. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. What are they, homie? Chew your beer here? Greg, the crew, Craft Beer Republic. This is Chew Your Beer, homie. Guess what? I'm at 14 Cannons, and why am I here? Because you told me to come here, homie. I heard your podcast, and I decided to make a trip out here. It's Friday evening. Brought the wife out. We're having some delicious beers. I just had the Martzen. Um, uh, I just ordered the Italian Pilsner that was created by them and Enneagram, amazing beer homes. Uh, I just want to say I don't call in a lot, but I do listen every single week, Holmes. I appreciate the work you guys do. I appreciate the information you put out, and I appreciate the new crew, homie. So Craft Beer Republic, love you guys. Keep up doing the good work, Greg. Thank you for being a good craft beer enthusiast out there and sharing your passion with me and all the other listeners, Holmes. So this is True Your Beer from the San Fernando Valley, Holmes. And letting you know I'm out of Ventura and I'm representing the Valley, Holmes. So this is True Your Beer at 14 Cannons. Yo, Nick, I told your, your crew out here that I heard the podcast and I'm here because of Greg, homie. So podcasts do work. I just spent a lot of money here, so... Hopefully, you have help. I mean, is it Chew Your Beer? You had to watch it. Peace out, eh? Oh, Chew, thank you for calling in. Thanks for that voicemail. If you guys want to call us, 805-538-BEER-2337. The number has not changed. And I very much appreciate you going out to 14 Cannons and checking out their new collab after we were talking to Nick about it. That is outstanding. Uh, I think I found a new best friend. Right? I love that. I'm out here. I just spent a lot of money. (laughs) I think my poor aching face cracked when he said that. Can we get Chew in here? Oh, my God, please. Chew is on. He's on Twitter at Chew Your Beer. Go follow him. He's he's always tweeting us and and all that good stuff. So he's awesome. I'm super jealous when he said he had the Marzen and then he goes ahead and says he had the Italian Pilsner. I'm just like, Mm -hmm. shit, man. 
Yeah, he's having a good time. Yeah, good there's one thing him. that him and I have in common. It's we've both dropped a lot of money at 14 cannons. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Chu, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Everybody else, call in. Leave a voicemail. Let us know uh, what you're drinking. And uh, I'd say the more hydrated you are, the better the voicemail becomes. I agree, because yeah. that was probably my favorite voicemail so far. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that we've ever received. That was top yeah. notch. That that's the only problem with Scott not doing Uber anymore. He literally used to have a sign that hung in the, like from the front seat that you can see in the back seat that says, "Are you drunk? Call." And it was just our number. And one time we got a guy calling like, "Hey, I'm Ryan," and he was just shittered. I wish I remember what show this. So I can tell you go back to listen to it. But oh my god, I can't believe he put a sign in his Uber that said to call the podcast. That's pretty rad, actually. <laughs> it is pretty good. Oh, the good old days. Uh, anyways, all right. I think it's time that we make ourselves a call to the pen. He calls to the bullpen for beer. Yes, he does. Like I said earlier, this is coming to us by way of Tavor. Don't forget to use our promo code when you're buying yourself some beers. We are drinking Masthead Brewing's Flat Earth Double NEIPA. It's 8%, has a 422 on untapped out of four, over 4,800 ratings. 422, that's pretty good. And a 95 on Beer Advocate. They say, we threw science to the curve with this beer and added an unbelievably stupid amount of hops at every step of the process. Logic and reason need not apply. Just stop reading this. Believe us, it's that good. And drink it already. They did not say what hops they used, but uh, there are definitely a lot in here. There's a lot in here. I think you you probably already know this. I don't know if your listeners know this or if Flex even knows this, but I, uh, I'm i really over the New England style. I'm straight up West Coast. I want it to be astringent. I want it to taste like pine saw. Um, <laughs> You're the MAC-10 of IPA drinkers. <laughs> straight up. Did I ever tell you? That's a story for another episode, but I went to an open house once with MAC-10. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's another time for that story. Uh I actually really like this beer, and I think because they dumped so many hops into it, it has a West Coast feel. If if West Coast and, and New England came together, mm-hmm. that's what this tastes like to if me. Biggie and Pac got together Straight and up. made a beer. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what this is. I mean, it starts off juicy. I mean, and, and Flecked, you can see, like, it's cloudy AF, just like yours. Yeah, right um, on. It starts off with that juice, but it really is bitter on the finish. It is. Like it's that westy finish. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. And uh I will say this the the color, like the way it looks in the glass, I don't think is super appealing. It's not the sexy. It's got it's it's a little dark. It's like it's trying to figure out what yeah. it is, you know? It's not the world's sexiest color. Is it that malty looking dark? No. It's mm-hmm. like I don't it's hard to describe. Yeah. It's like almost like a looks pretty yellow, yeah. Almost murky instead of hazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like okay. swampy. Yeah, but uh, it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, I'll post a picture on the gram. You can see it for yourself visually. But uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. It's it's It has its East Coast qualities, but I think if it was blind taste tested, it's more West Coast than East Coast. Yeah. So I dig it. I do too. I'm all, I'm all about it. I'm here for it, as Nicole would say. Got a couple more things to get to. Uh, first, crazy alcohol. I got to come up with a better name of this, but crazy alcohol rule of the week or law or, uh, yeah, I said it last week. I think it's fun to talk about all the, it's, it's we're the crappy republic. Let's talk about all the stupid alcohol laws around the world and nation. Right. In Alaska, it's illegal to become visibly intoxicated in a bar. I would get so arrested for this. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck I, are you supposed gotta, to do in a bar? Yeah. Put on like your. <laughs> game face you know every (laughs) second that you're at the bar like i will have one beer please (laughs) (laughs) here is my credit card (laughs) you know like sir would you like any water absolutely do not yes please for the water (laughs) sir (laughs) like you know it's like what are you supposed right, to do? Right, because the harder you enunciate, the less drunk right. you look. Well, yeah, you know, and it's like... Just guess Nick. Tape, like, some yardsticks, like, to your <laughs> back, so, like, you're always standing up straight, but it's like <laughs> it's like that awkward in a back brace straight, you know? Oh, like, you know, it, it might be useful to have a set of crutches. If you roll into the, bra- the bar with crutches, 
they're already expecting that you're injured. You're not going to be standing up straight. It might be a little wobbly. So you have a few and you start to wobble. You're not going to look any different. Copy that. So if you ever go to a bar in Alaska, just bring some fucking crunches. <laughs> I'm just so I'm just so astounded by this. I would get arrested in a second in Alaska. Just a uh, couple drinks at a bar. I'm screaming I'm sorry, fucking I'm Neil dying. Diamond at the top of my lungs and everybody like, "Whoa, sir. It is bum, illegal. Bum, bum. It talk. is Ill- <laughs> It is illegal to sing Neil Diamond at the top of your lungs in Alaska." We need to bring you to Alaskan jail. Alaskan jail? <laughs> well, that's what it is. Where the guards are nothing but fucking moose. Right. Right? I'll be like, okay, please take me there, sir. <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting on the plane to go to Alaska. Sir, do you have any bags to check? Just this one. <laughs> No, I, just, I just got some crutches. Just, I'm just imagining a bar full of drunk assholes trying to walk around on crutches. Well, after listening to this, <laughs> that just makes me wonder, like, how people act in Alaska, like, when they drink. I don't know. Are they just, like, boring as shit? Could be. I hope some people from Alaska are listening. Unless they play, like, crutch bowling, where they get a bunch of drunks on crutches and just throw shit at them. No, that, that doesn't. Fun. Well, yeah, it could be fun, but I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> Let us know, Alaskans. <laughs> what the hell do you do up there? <laughs> Besides not get drunk at a bar, apparently. Right. Well, not visibly drunk. <laughs> yes. Not, not, besides, vis- yeah, not visibly <laughs> drunk. That's the key word. <laughs> what do you do besides hide the shit out of the fact you are intoxicated? Yeah. And then the second they walk out the bar, they're just like, fuck, dude. <laughs> Anytime, if I ever go to Alaska and I hear somebody just like over enunciating, I'm like, ha drunk. Right. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You Nailed are it. hammered and I respect it. I mean, you are hammered, and I respect that. (laughs) I said good day, sir. (laughs) Oh, gar, gersh, as they say up there in Alaska. Uh, Molson Coors has pulled 11 of their economy brands as they meaningfully streamline and premiumize their brand. This sounds like when Gwyneth Paltrow got a divorce. (laughs) A conscious, a conscious uncoupling. uncoupling. Oh my god! <laughs> Among those to make the cut of being uh, babied is Magnum and Mickey's Ice. They are Mickey's Ice. That's what the fuck the booze league should be drinking. Right. Yeah. I want. I want to ask Molson Coors what they think people think of them. They're getting rid of their cheap brands to premiumize Molson Coors. I'm just imagining them all sitting around a board meeting wearing like top hats and monocles. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us, we're premium. <laughs> <laughs> I take semi offense to this, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> top of the mo no, top of the mo that's Irish. That's, I know, I kind of made them Irish. <laughs> yeah. They all sounded like leprechauns. They probably rolled up to the meeting, they're like, These are the 11 bears that did not pass go. They did not collect $200. <laughs> we will be pulling them off the shelf. <laughs> I said good day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> now give me back my crutches. <laughs> I yeah, said give think- me back my crutches, please. <laughs> <laughs> People are walking into these shitty dive bars in Alaska asking for a Coors Light or something. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Getting rid of their cheap brands? That, uh, that's all what? they're good for. I'm going to tell you right now. I, d- I did read something about this pulling of the cheap beers and it Mm -hmm. did make me a little bit sad as my go-to party beer growing up was always miller high life light now nothing you know when you were 21 you know going to bars nothing ever beat high life in a bottle but when you cruise to college parties you know your buddies went to school out of state i'd always bring a 30 pack of miller high life light and that was my go-to drinking game beer and that is one of the beers that they are pulling off the shelf. So highlight, let highlight. I think we have the same light. question. Yeah, I've never. Yeah, it's a thing. That's a thing. Yeah, I like, know there's you, Miller Light and there's Miller High Life. Right. You, so you know how Miller High Life has like the red Miller High Life emblem. Sure. The Miller High Life light was like a navy blue. See out here, Miller Light was the navy blue. Mm-hmm. Well, I Miller agree. Light. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the white with the blue. 
Yeah. Right? But the High Life yeah. Light was the gold can, and then it had, like, the white, like, wrapping around it with, hmm. the, like, a navy blue emblem that said High Life Light in the middle. Wait, is High Life the champagne of beers? Correct. Okay. But Correct. I don't think we have the High Life I've Light. I've never seen it light oh. ever. Yeah. Well, we. It must you know, be a local thing. Clearly, we get it here. <laughs> Wisco I, style, baby. Because <laughs> <laughs> clearly, we've had our fair share of Miller Lite. I mean, we all went through our early 20s, but. Well, uh, naturally. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have not had High Life Light. Yeah. So I just wanted to pour one out and uh, say RIP, Miller High Life Light, my favorite go to uh, college drinking beer. Plenty of liver damage back in the day. Tons. Tons. And I played, I played my best beer pong with that beer. You always need a real shit beer for beer pong. We played. Well, I'll talk about this later. Um, <laughs> next show. Yeah, this is the craft beer republic. <laughs> Not the We're already drinking brandy. Beer pong. Yeah, we only republic. have steaks and brandy here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the craft beer republic. We got spirits and and booze. Nothing else. A man's twenty eight dollar beer at LaGuardia Airport sparks fierce debate about airport beer prices. A LaGuardia Airport retailer had to check its pricing after being called out by a traveler who posted a picture of a (laughs) sky-high $28 beer on social media. LOL at all of this, including the additional 10% COVID recovery fee that doesn't go to workers, tweeted Cooper Lund uh, July 7th while visiting the Beer Garden outlet in New York before his flight. I've actually been there, and uh, that was years ago, and the beer was insanely expensive. He posted a picture of a menu with a glass of Sam Adams Summer Ale listed at the exorbitant price of twenty seven eighty five. You got it for fucking Sam Adams. <laughs> following, Sorry. <laughs> following the post, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey requested that the OTG, who manages all the food stuff, uh, audit its prices. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, 28 bucks for Sam Adams. I don't fucking think so. You could buy like a pallet of fucking <laughs> Sam Adams for $28. Right. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. We went there. Uh, we were flying out of New York. We were leaving New York. We stopped at that exact location and they had like Brooklyn Brewery, which is still craft, but it's, you know, it's like the East Coast stone. Like you mm-hmm. can get it everywhere. And it was, it was like $18 for a fucking IPA. It was ridiculous. That's crazy. I thought a twenty dollar yeah. whiskey cocktail was bad at an airport. That is horrendous. Yeah, Absolutely I made horrendous. the big mistake. I made the big mistake of ordering like, do you want the the sixteen or the twenty two? I was like, ah, oh, twenty two, of course. And I was like, oh, I didn't know they need to take out a fucking mortgage for this thing. <laughs> Thirteen dollar <laughs> upgrade. Yeah, <or> whatever. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, and then finally, a drunk man breaks into a family's home and poos in their kettle and vomits on the floor and falls asleep on their sofa. <laughs> kettle like a like a tea kettle like a tea kettle yeah i'm thinking how do you how do you have that kind of precision to get it into the kettle <laughs> it's pretty good actually when you think about it what family just has a family kettle though like they don't anymore <laughs> they keep it in the middle of the table and they're like hey don't touch that that's the family kettle <laughs> Well, they used to have one. I have a feeling they got rid of it. Uh, posting on Facebook, an anonymous women... women wow. Posting on famous... <laughs> one, <everybody>. two, <laughs> three. Go. Enunciate. <laughs> yeah. I need to talk like those Alaskans. Posting on Facebook... <laughs> An anonymous woman claims she found the man in her house after accidentally forgetting to lock the door. She wrote, at the weekend, my husband left our conservatory door open after I'd gone to bed and forgot to close it. Sunday morning, 5 a.m. ish, my little girl goes downstairs to watch TV instead of waking us up, but immediately comes back upstairs saying there's a man downstairs talking to himself. I thought it was just her imagination. Half asleep, I told her to go back to bed, and I go back to bed. Anyway, go down to make a cup of tea and make breakfast around 7. Turns out there is a man talking to himself downstairs. We quickly found out he had defecated inside our kettle as well as vomited in the kitchen, she added. I'm wondering if this is a house from Clue. <laughs> because of the, okay, so that was number he one. He forgot what I was gonna to say. close the door of the conservatory? Well, to the conservatory. <laughs> did, he leave, did he leave the candlestick out too and the fucking rope and the wrench and the lead pipe? Like when you said that, Greg, your listeners obviously won't won't be able to see this. But Flex's face 
his eyebrows shot up like four inches up his forehead when he said the conservatorium uh, door. Whatever. It was the homeless like, guy with the tea kettle. This fucking in the Mr. conservatory. Mr. 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 Green's house? Jesus no. Christ, oh, man. Dear. <laughs> Professor Plum. Yeah, <laughs> Professor Plum gets hammered and shits in a tea kettle. And- <laughs> Jesus. That's why we can never figure out who did it during the game. Everyone was hammered. <laughs> shitting in tea oh, and kettles. Sh- and shitting in a tea kettle was never a oh. viable option. I'd say it is now. Oh, okay. Oh, dear. So there you have it. Well, I feel like that's a good way to end this show. <laughs> We're going to allow it. With, it. Yeah, end it in the conservatory with a little music. Thanks, everybody, for listening. You go find Deb on the gram at one hop. With a P mess, and uh, she'll she'll be posting some skincare pictures shortly. Oh, hell no! <laughs> <laughs> you find Flex at Flex Me a Beer underscores in between. You find us at Craft Beer Republic and CraftBeerRepublic dot com. Don't forget to call us 805-538 Beer two three three seven. I think that's everything. Oh, hi Vanessa. Hey Vanessa. Hi Vanessa. <laughs> I hope everyone stays very well hydrated. And on that note, good night everybody. Yeah.